You know, welcome to Mosdi Academy. Today I'm going to do the series two of uh, chemistry most expected question for UTM in 2019. As promised, and I will be quick to explain some certain principle on why we are picking some answers. The first one we have um, X is gas and it's giving us a X here, also in gas. So we have a form of what? The question is um, the type of energy involved in the above transformation is dash. Now, the thing we can talk about is uh, knowing the properties of the periodic table. And if we've discussed that one before in our videos, we talk about electron affinity as the energy charge. One mole of an atom completely form a gaseous atom as you can see here. So now electron affinity is the energy charge when one mole of a substance form a gaseous atom here. Yeah. Now it is oxygen number here is zero, it has lost electron to form a gaseous atom. So we go for electron affinity. Question two extracted from nineteen ninety one question number four. In two separate experiments, 0.36 gram and 0.71 gram of chlorine combined with a metal X to give Y and Z respectively. An analysis showed that Y and Z contain 0.20 gram and 0.40 gram of X respectively. The data above represent the law of dash. Now, this is also under chemistry, what we call laws of chemical combinations. We talk about conservation of mass, multiple proportion, constant composition or definite proportion, and laws of reciprocal proportion. Now to prove this, we have to do some a little piece of our calculation. 0 0.36 gram, 0 0.36 gram of a substance <coughs> produce a 0 0.20 gram of a of X. Now we can say one gram will now produce how many gram? I can say how many Y gram. So when I cross multiply here, I can say Y is equal to 0 0.20 times 1 all over, all over 0.36. What I'm doing is just dividing 0 0.20 divided by 0 0.36. And if I do that well for my calculator, I should have 0 0.555 repeating. So that's the first one. The same sample also have uh, the same process. It's having a 0 0.71 gram of chlorine combined to give 0 0.40 gram of X. So if I now say one gram of this, we also yield, if I use the same y and cross multiply chemistry with one times zero point y would be zero point four zero over zero point seven one. So when you punch your calculator, zero point four zero divided by zero point seven one we give us a zero point four zero divided by zero point seven one. Because it was zero point seven one that yield <coughs> 0 0.40, so 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.71 will give us 0 0.56. 0 0.56. Now from here, we can set them to ratio 0 0.55 repeating, which is the same as 56. Ratio 0 0.56 will give us 1 ratio 1. And because they are in 1 ratio 1, we can talk about uh, the law of uh, constant composition, which states that. All pure sample of a compound, all pure sample of a compound have the same element combined by the same proportion by mass. Of constant composition is explaining that the ratio of um, a an, an, a compound combining combining together will always be the same. For example, a very clear example, you can discuss about. Um, Water, water, and water. You can have different classification of water. Now, this one can be a well water, a spring water, 
and this one can be a tap water. And when you look into this, you can talk about uh, hydrogen is combining with oxygen in all these three types of water. And the ratio in which they are combined is the same. As you can see, hydrogen is always one, two times ones are two. So you have two ratio, oxygen is always 16. Same term, two ratio 16, two ratio 16. As you can see, you can say one ratio eight, lowest now, one to eight, one to eight. Now when two compound, when two compound are combined to form two elements combined, or compound is forming, they combine the same ratio, they combine together to form to the same ratio. Two elements combine to form a compound which are actually in the same ratio. Explain constant composition, which is the same thing as a definite, definite proportion. So that's that about that. Question number, question number three is that how many lone of pi or how many lone pi electrons how many lone pi electrons are there in central atom of water molecule now when we want to draw the level structure of water molecule we need to draw oxygen we use the outer moisture oxygen is number eight in the periodic table and the electronic origin is two comma six so what we are saying is that when oxygen combine we can have a one two then we have a, you can say three, four, then five, six. I'm drawing the atom here according to Lewis structure. It's now combining with uh, hydrogen. Let's represent hydrogen by star. And another hydrogen here, let's represent by star. So this one combined with this one to form dup uh, duplex. This one also combined with this one to form duplex. You can see duplex two, they are sharing the electron which you call covalent bond. So water molecule actually exists in this type of Lewis structure form. And these two bonds here are called lone pairs. Lone pairs. Now we have one lone pair and the other lone pairs. So the two type the lone pairs that we have in water molecule are two lone pairs. Question four. For question four <clears throat> to question ten, I think we have elementary chemistry which we can do in 30 seconds. Now question four, 989 question one. Which of the following would support the conclusion of that the solid sample is a mixture? Now, solid have a high melting and boiling point. Very important. So, all what you need to know about is that solid samples are always having high melting and boiling point. And when you go there, this, the first one, solid can be ground to powder, no. Density of solid is 2.25, no. The melting point is between the range of 300 and 300, which is very, very high. And that should be the right answer. Question five. Extracted from 1990 question 2. Now we have uh, changes in physical state uh, of a stronger substance T as shown in the scheme. We have solid, liquid, and gas. Let's see X. X is moving from solid, you can the arrow, to gas. When substance moves from solid to gas, then the substance is actually sublime. So the process is called sublimation or gas back to solid. Now the next one, which is a uh, Y. Y is moving from gas back to to liquid gas back to liquid that is what we call condensation condensation which is the formation of rainfall and the last one this one is moving from liquid to solid that is what we call freezing freezing now we have to be very very careful solid turns to liquid that is melting but when liquid turns solid, we call it a freezing. Freezing. Let's, let's be very, very careful about that. So this is free freezing. So I that sublimation X, condensation Y, and freezing Z. Just here. Question next. Let's move to the next sheet. Question six is talking about what we all know in chemistry as well. So in a balanced chemical equation obey the law of our conservation of mass please note that all chemical equation must be balanced is according to the law of conservation of mass which say that matter can neither be created nor destroyed or can be formed from one word can be transformed from one form to another question seven we have a, a mixture from 1994 question one a mixture of sand ammonium chloride and sodium chloride is best separated by that. 
You have to understand something here because we have to know that uh, ammonium chloride will definitely sublime. Sublimation, we discussed about that in the previous sheet. When solids are moving from solid to gas or from gas to solid. Now, ammonium chloride will sublime. That means we've taken that one away. Then we have to talk about the sand. We should understand that sand generally is going to what we can actually perform filtration filter we can filter off sand how can we do that now what we just need to do is that we have to add water so that what we know is that uh, when we add water the sand we actually what we can actually talk about filtration is just separating a solute from what a solvent so here we can talk about uh, ammonium chloride we sublime then we can add water to filter filter of uh, the water to know that the sand will go down and the one that will be up sand can never be soluble in water however sodium chloride can what can be soluble please let's note that now we can talk about uh, sublimation because this one we sublime we add water then we filter so those are the process i think sublimation should be the first thing followed by addition of water and evaporation no so we have to filter that is stress a question eight an increase in temperature causes an increase in pressure because of temperature we know we've studied in lit classes that are uh, the average kinetic energy of a body or a system so when the temperature is high, what we understand is that uh, according to the kinetic theory of curve the high temperature actually increase the rate of collision as in molecule collides at high velocity frequently to the wall of the container vessel so it decreases the number of collision no it can decrease Temperature will rather increase collision, and collision theory states that when 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 substances collide with high velocity, they lead to formation of products which we call effective effective collision. So now the molecules gas bombard to the wall of container more frequently, which is what we are talking about in kinetic theory of matter. It increases the number of collision between molecules. Yes, it increases, but not that. Um, when it increases, it makes molecules to collide. It causes molecules to combine. It's very, very wrong. So this is the right answer to that. Question 9. We have a... Uh, which of the following is an example of chemical change? This is very, very simple. All physical or separation techniques are physical change. Sublimation, distillation are always physical change as they don't lead to formation of new substance. Rusting is a physical change because although iron rusts in the presence of oxygen and moisture, when iron rusts, they don't give you new substance. They only change color. So when when you look at your nail, they change to brown, and uh, that does not give you nail. It's still an iron. But when you dissolve salt, salt we know is a sodium chloride in water. Definitely, you know you are going to have a, a new substance. So which can be what? hydrochloric acid and what sodium oxide whenever substance is giving you new substance it is called a chemical change and that is option a to that the last but not the least for this series which is uh, extracted from 1995 question 11 in the oil drop experiment this millican determined i've explained this in my league classes on an online video that uh Millikan actually talked about uh, what we call uh, the a detector called the charge of an electron. Charge of an electron. The experiment is called oil drop experiment. And it was able to tell us that the charge of electron is in value of uh, 1.6 times 3 is 1 negative 19 columns. So now we have to understand that uh, when we can talk about uh, the charge of electron, charge of charge mass ratio was performed by Sir J.J. Thompson those I want to know more and the mass of proton proton actually and the mass of electron was not actually discussed in your syllabus but please note that uh, charge mass ratio was discovered by Thompson and charge of electron by Minikan oil drop experiment so now uh, I'm through with this series or what you can always do is just to try over before you look at the solution to the video you can try the question first and read yourself and uh, i promise you guys i will be 
and we will try as much as possible to make sure I run through all the series of chemistry questions from the scratch to the highest or the toughest form of question. I'll see you guys soon and uh, please don't forget to click the subscribe button so that you can actually understand uh, more and you know when I actually post a new video. Thank you very much.